Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. I hope you had a good lunch. Um, it's uh, 2 p.m. Uh, we are ready for, for the next talk. Well, most of us are. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> but here we go. Um, so this is 60 days in a new startup. Um, my 60 days in a new startup. My first 60 days as the first employee in a new startup. Um, and they started December 1st, so 66 days ago. Um, this is going to be a pretty raw and, and fresh retelling of that story. Um, if, you, if you'd rather hear a Polish talk about like, how digital doubles fix all your problems, you need to talk to a salesperson, uh, not me, right? Like I'm an engineer. Um, over the last 25 years, I did Linux sysadmin stuff. I did app programming as a contractor um, at my own product company. That's a story for another day. Um, I did a couple of years at Puppet uh, as a programmer and tech lead for open source content, um, modules, cloud, developer experience, um, code infrastructure. That was like in the era between 250 and 500 employees. Uh, after that, I went for a year into a cloud native startup for package hosting with 15 to 30 employees. And now, like two months ago, uh, I'm, I'm with Overmind uh, with like four folks. Um, I want to start with like, why, why do you do that? Like, why do you go to a startup? What are the things that, that, you sh that, that I looked at? Um, when I made the decision and why does it work for me and um, and why I'm here today, right? Um, the basic idea was something that resonated with me. Um, I, I'll talk a little bit about my goals in a second, but um, the idea is um, provide deeper visibility in your system structure and, and help people that are managing infrastructure to understand what the heck is going on in your systems, right? And especially just coming off a year in a, a cloud-native SaaS provider, um, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would have been nice to have. So, so that was a great thing. Mm. Also, Dylan, the founder over here in the front, um, ha has, uh, is somebody I know from, uh, from a previous project, and, and he there has worked on things that made sense for customers. and, and both in the product sense and in the engineering sense, worked on them, and, and that provided um, a, a certain level of trust and confidence that this project is actually going somewhere. Also, um, and I realized I should have maybe talked to you about that before, but we have secured funding for, uh, <laughs> for, for two years. And so, like, really, if I, if I, when I was thinking through it, it there's there's very little risk in me for, for, for joining here. It's going to be two years of salary. I, I, can, I can do some engineering at the end. I'm going to be two years an engineer in, in a startup that did a lot of things. And if it goes wrong, it's his fault, right? Um, it's always the business people's fault. Um, uh, but also, uh, I'm in a phase in my life where I can afford the, the lock-in and the commercial risk, right? Like, I, I do have some savings if it goes all south. Um, I'm, I'm not going to live on the street tomorrow. Why did I go into that? Um, as I said, um, the, the idea for Overmind is build a product that helps people managing systems. Um, and uh, similarly, as an engineer, as an engineering leader, I want to um, make a difference for the team I'm working with. Uh, uh, we all have experience that manager that shouldn't be a manager. Um, and while the bar is not high, right, um, I, I think this is the point that will make the longest difference long term. Uh, a friend of me always quotes, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And, and I, I think these are words to live by. Um, also, another thing is, as I said, after two years in engineer um, in, in a startup, uh, you get to pick and choose where you go next. Uh, I, I'm not going to mince words here. Like I'm, I, I want to be at a good product. I, I want to be at a good team. 
but I also want to make a career out of here. It's like uh, a lot of people are dancing around those points as if they're dirty or something like that. But we're all here, I think, to to achieve something, right? Like you don't travel across Europe to a conference to to do nothing. Um, <laughs> also, uh, and and that's one of the points where uh, and and my my troubles with this talk in general, like a, a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about, I haven't seen the outcomes yet, right? Um, but this particular one is is, is is funny because it's it's also one of my my dreams uh, that I've always been having and where I have no idea whether I actually want it. But uh, I, I want to become the C CTO, the public face of the technical organization, who like both leads and demonstrates the value, the, the values that I stand for and the values that that Overmind provides as a product. Um, <laughs> and last but not least. Um, I want to be able to retire off of one's exit, right? Like, as I said, startups are, are things that are there to get sold off, and that's the reality of the startup life. Um, and I, I know people who are very happy just uh, programming Java on the same line of business application for the same insurance for 20 years, and that's just not me. Having gotten that start out of the way, um, I, I want to just go through a fairly chronological uh, through what happened in the last two months and like a couple of details have been redacted to protect the innocent um, but uh, it, it's one of the advantages of, of a small team like uh, there's most of what follows is my fault or Dylan's fault for that matter um, mostly Dylan's fault but don't tell him uh, so first week right you start up at a new startup, a new job, and I have no fucking idea what I'm doing, right? Like, don't get me wrong, I, as I said, I, I, I do have a lot of experience, but I don't know anything of, like, the code base. I, I have some previous relationship with Dylan, but I never worked with him on a team. Like, he's a different person. He just got a bunch of cash in the bank, and he needs to burn it. Right, like there's there's a lot of unknowns. Um, the the thing that I realized is like everybody starts as an intern. On your first day, you don't know how the product works, you don't know how it's deployed, you don't know where the code is, you don't know um, what what happens. You, you have you have some experiences that you can fall back. You have learned some things uh, that that will do you good. Um, but on the first day, you're in, you start as an intern. The difference is how much and how fast you learn. The difference is what are the experiences you can link up to um, <clears throat> the, the, and even as an intern, like the things that you already know, the things that you've seen at school work and, and, and be uh, proposed. Um, and, and so the first week for me was learning everything from scratch, who's already here, where is everything going, the strategy, the tactics, read all the docs, read all the uh, design notes, uh, read the slides and speaker notes of the pitch presentations to get a really uh, a better understanding of what it is actually that we want to achieve, right? Um, and then on the technical side, why are we using Golang? How does it work? What is the ecosystem around that? Where the, where's the code, what is there as, uh, on scripting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, as part of that, uh, in November, so in the week I started actually, um, I moved from the UK to Austria, um, which I, I can't recommend as, as part of starting in a new startup, really, but it, it, it is what it happened. So um, I, it, it's very much on my mind that you also need a place to work, right? In, in our time, a lot of that is, is like remote office and, and home office. Um, even when you start at a regular company, they provide you with a desk and a uh, workstation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of the things I, I just want to say for, for folks, um, because it, it both surprised me and not, um, is like your setup at home should be on the order of an investment of like six to eight K, maybe a month's salary or two. And saying that also, 
Um, most of that should be paid by one of the companies you've been working for. I, I, I can't say it any other way. Um, uh, companies expect us to provide uh, eight hours of our day, a third of our life. Um, they, they better provide for the infrastructure to actually make that efficient. Um, and also, compare it to your actual salary and that you've, you're going to be working for that company for two, three, five years. Like a month's salary at the start is not going to make a huge difference in the budget. Um, diving deeper into like the, the first week, um, building up an understanding of the code base. I learn through doing, I learn through experimentation, uh, and I think that's true for a lot of folks. <sighs> no. Uh, I, I, I think that's true for a lot of folks in, in IT and technology. There's, there's just such a rich uh, tradition of experimentation and, and the ability, especially today more so than ever, now that we don't need uh, physical hardware anymore, to just try out shit and, and see what sticks. Right? So, uh, just the, the high points for me in the first week, um, get a PR ready on, on the first day to merge on just doing a couple of lines of copy paste in our uh, acquisition pipeline uh, to understand like how does it fit together, what are the APIs, how does it compile, what tools do I need locally, um, how, does it, how is it tested, what happens if I screw up, etc. All these things that, that like, give me a more visceral understanding of, of what needs to be done. Um, then day three, I, I've noted here, a minor fix in the front and nothing big. Um, I, I'm in the lucky position that I don't need to prove myself, but also I, I, I need to understand as, as an engineer in a team of three or four, I, I need to be able to touch every piece of the puzzle. And like, you don't want me to touch the front end, but sometimes, sometimes it's just necessary. Um, Uh, the, the thing, uh, and another note that I have here is like the uh, IEEE, uh, sorry, what about you all, shut up, um, uh, the IEEE um, mantra of, of working code and rough consensus, right, um, e especially at the start when, when you have, um, you have no experience to go on in this particular project that in this particular context uh, just having something that works is so much more valuable because doing the work uh, like has a lot of uh, of emphasis on 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 those things for for the rest of the first month uh, things uh, started to get a little bit more strategic um, and, and like one of the questions is like what are the scaling targets and the scaling bottlenecks um, with, with four people I, I can't implement everything myself I, I, as a team we can't implement everything that we want uh, tomorrow uh, just as a matter of, of, of life um, how, how does planning and communication work with the new people that start with me um, uh, we, we need one goal, we need a shared understanding of, of like the rough path, the uh, constant communication of the process. Um, and three engineers in a trench coat don't need Jira to organize ourselves, right? Like, um, uh, we, we need a place where we can put our notes, we need to chat about like what are we doing today. Um, and, and it works, right? Like, uh, we're all grown up folks, we, we do have some of the experiences from other projects. and. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how it runs. Um, one example I have from, from a different project I've worked in, in another place, uh, I just really like to trot it out because it's, it's so, so poignant to, to like the trade-offs that, that happen in, in these early stages of projects is um, a, a pre-seed startup prototype building uh, <laughs> and, and the the founder's goal was to have like a hundred customers in in with with like a couple of hundred business objects each, maybe in total within like the first year. Uh, 
And it turns out that if, if you only have 100 business objects for 100 customers, you don't need pagination in your API, and you don't need to spend time on implementing pagination in your API, because you can just return all the data in one API request, it's going to be fine, right? And, and that's, that's a week of work that you don't have to, you, you don't have to do. Um, it was a very interesting conversation with that founder, but he, he did understand that actually he doesn't need to pay for that at the moment. Um, also, I don't need API stability and I don't need high availability because um, we have no external consumers of our APIs and we don't have uh, customers on our systems yet, right? Um, today, in the first month, I need to optimize for different things. On the other hand, I also can't paint myself into a corner. I, I need to understand where, like a month from now, uh, half a year from now, I want to be. Um, just because I don't need Jira today to organize my projects, I do need to understand the interdependencies of what people are working on and what are the components and what do I need to, uh, to chuck out um, before, before we can uh, let people run on the system. I don't need the pagination API right now, uh, but I do need to know that my framework supports some kind of pagination so that once we have the 101st uh, customer and that doesn't work anymore, uh, we can invest in, in building that and don't have to rewrite everything. Um, I, if I don't need API stability now, I need to have a defined API and a release process um, because I need to stay in control of the entire system and I need to understand how the components are talking to each other. And I don't need high availability now, but I need to know uh, where my single points of failure are so that uh, when we have customers and when we have people pay for it, uh, knock on wood, um, I, I know where to invest to make the system better and, and to do rollouts that don't disturb traffic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I, uh, as, as the time progresses, uh, the, the problems just keep coming. I mean, problems, it, it's just like, that's, that's the work that, that needs to happen. Uh, understanding how do the components get deployed and how are they connected. Uh, Dylan had a great Terraform uh, module that did all the deployment. Um, except that he only ran it from his local machine and destroyed the environment afterwards he was done with it because like, he, that, that's what he was working on, right? Um, that's great for developing on the system and exactly what he needed at the time, but if we want to get to a point where we can have uh, early access um, and preview users on it, uh, we need something else, right? And, and so uh, a, a lot of that first month was concerned with scaling from that single person development environment to um, to something that can run forever and and have people on it and uh, be something that multiple people can work on at the same time. Um, I spent a significant chunk of the of week three uh, reading up on AWS multi account uh, practices uh, to avoid getting. Uh, stuck like I saw at other projects um, with prod and, and dog food environments in the same AWS account, which was all kinds of fun, except for when you actually had to touch it, right? Um, I did configure SSO for getting the uh, G Suite uh, users into AWS, which also has um, some uh, weird things because AWS SSO wants you to Reauthenticate every hour by default, and you need to figure out where in the control tower interface you can you can click around and, and fix that. Um, getting remote uh, storage for Terraform state online uh, made it possible to to like have multiple people run Terraform, and then shortly thereafter, actually configure GitHub Actions. Um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, configure GitHub Actions to be able to run Terraform plan and Terraform apply from a action so that you can just click and say, I want that branch in that environment and, and have it run, which actually was surprisingly easy to configure with uh, GitHub OIDC support something something and, and you need to configure the trust so that AWS understands that GitHub is something that is allowed to deploy from that repository um, and it's great, right? Uh, Will it be how we deploy Overmind in a year or two from now? Mm, yeah, probably, probably not. I don't know. Um, we'll see. But uh, for now, it's absolutely fine. It works great. I don't have to have Terraform on my laptop anymore. Um, I don't have to have the Terraform state on my laptop. Anybody in the team can click on the button and make it happen. 
uh, and it's uh, three lines of documentation with a link to the action that says click there and, and it will happen, right? And uh, it notifies our uh, chat channel and we get like the deployment has started, the deployment has succeeded, the deployment has not succeeded um, and you can, can go through to the logs and um, it's, it's pretty great. Um, the other big issue was, or uh, the other big task, I, I should say, was was like getting all the secrets and and passwords uh, removed from from the code. Uh, again, completely sensible to do when you're just uh, working on your own development environment. Something that needs to change in uh, in in a true production environment. Uh, and again, a lot of reading of docs and understanding that, yeah, the things that I'm building on are do have a a next day story about the next thing that I'm probably going to need, but that I I can't spend the time on currently because I I don't need it and I have other things to do uh, to get it doing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I. Until like two hours ago, I didn't know what I was talking about. So, um, slides. Yeah, I, I should say that. I should say that um, before I forget and before I get kicked off the stage. Um, I do have extensive notes to what I'm talking about. I don't have any slides because, like, I'm an engineer, not a salesperson. Um, and if you want any of the notes or, or want to follow up on any of the details that I'm talking about of the things that I've been working on, uh, please do find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always happy to answer messages or, or requests or hop on a call to, to just uh, hang out and, and chat with anyone. Um, also, I realized that uh, I'm, I'm probably on time soon. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I, I'm only barely through the first month. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'll I'll try to make that a little bit faster. Um, well, one of the things that that really helped in like focusing on the important things is is uh, always asking, what if we had to run a um, a, a customer demo tomorrow, right? Like nothing, nothing clears the mind as as good as imagining what a customer would experience if they click the button today or tomorrow, right? Um, and sure, if if you really had to have a investor tomorrow that wanted to see the prototype, um, there would be some smoke and mirrors. There would be some compromises in what we actually can show. Um, but there's always that one thing that we could cram in today uh, that would make it better, easier, faster, uh, less risky to show off, right? And while I'm working on these backend things, uh, Dylan and, and our frontend guy are working on, on the UI and, and making sure that the data visualization actually works. Um, uh, I did depend upon uh, that's that's not a story I want to get into, but like being ha having confidence that all your dependencies are up to date and, and consistent across the repositories also very nice. Um, uh, as, as soon as we talk about getting it into a stable runtime system, of course, understanding what's happening there is important. And again, on a development system, just looking into your uh, Docker logs is fine. Uh, in AWS, uh, in in EKS, on on out there, that doesn't work anymore. So uh, I I rolled out a Honeycomb Cube Agent, uh, just collect all the logs, stuff them in Honeycomb. Mm, yeah, it could could be better, could be worse. Uh, I we we now have all the logs there, and I've started to to roll out Open Telemetry to to get more detailed information on what's happening. Also a great forcing function than uh, deploying a library like that to understand how the code is connected because you really need to um, uh, connect all your con all your trace context so that open telemetry can show you what you're doing which forces you to understand in the real world how your code is connected and how your code call hierarchy works um, which I found very helpful starting out in in like 
uh, dragging myself through everything that's happening uh, in our data acquisition pipeline and in the processing um, to understand how it's connected. And then um, as, as a uh, maybe biased, but it, the visualization of how all of that is connected um, is both helpful for me personally in understanding the code, but also a good indicator that uh, as a company or product idea, we are on the right way because visualis vis visualizing the complex uh, structures just makes it so much easier, right? Um, also, uh, just because we are at configuration management camp, um, setting up DNS uh, for the different environments, hmm, I, I, I'm, I don't have the time to go into the details, but it's been a journey. And then Christmas and New Year rolled around, and that was a, a little breather in, in, in that roller coaster ride. Um, the, the final thing, the, the second month is, is more of the same, but different, like uh, writing a new feature here, right, uh, adding an API there. Uh, the one thing, the last thing I want to say uh, as, as I'm running out of time here is um, VS dev containers are uh, freaking amazing. Um, you don't have to have your uh, development tools installed on your machine anymore. They just get baked into the uh, Docker container that's running in your IDE. And um, it's, it's such a contrast to, if you look at the official uh, Go documentation, for example, they are like, yeah, our install process is so easy. Here's a tarball, just proc it into your uh, user local. Um, and that's all great. That's really simple and a lot better than a lot of other installers that I've seen for development environments. Don't get me wrong. Um, but it doesn't help with managing multiple versions. It doesn't help with uh, getting the same version to everyone in the team. It doesn't help with uh, getting that version into um, into the production system. Uh, that doesn't help me uh, be able to uh, work on the front end because, uh, surprise, the front end does not use Golang. I, I know it's, it's difficult to understand for Google engineers, but there are other languages that go out there. Um, and, and having a dev container that just gives you the project that you're working on uh, as, as part of your IDE is, is just uh, really great. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you should really try it out. Yeah, more open telemetry, more um, uh, refining the VS code uh, setup. Uh, more, oh, there is a Terraform provider for our authentication service, so I don't need to copy paste uh, secrets anymore uh, between web interfaces. Um, life is great, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, life is great. I, I mean, there's more to do, there's always more to fix. Um, but for the next two years, so that's, that's gonna be my life and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, thank you all for listening. Um, if you are, as I said, if, if you have any questions to specifics of what I talked about, um, hit me up on LinkedIn. If you want to uh, see what we're working on, early access is uh, almost at the door. We already have a white wait list. Go to overmind.tech and check it out if you want to understand your infrastructure better. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, see you around and enjoy the rest of this show.